What's up everyone, it's Simmer Singh back with another video and welcome to the Guide to Get Into Dental School series. So this is going to be a multiple video series and I'm going to be giving you guys my advice based off my experiences and what I have been told from admission committee members on how to be a competitive applicant. In this particular video, we are gonna discuss these topics. So hopefully you guys find this helpful. I have timestamps listed in the description and right here. So if you wanna fast forward to any particular moment, please do. But yeah, before we get into the topic of the video, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Uh, and if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And if you have any questions, leave it in the comment section below or personally email me. All right, let's get into the video. I need to get accepted into dental school, Simran, like what GPA do I have to maintain, Simran this, Simran that, and in all honesty, it depends. Because the fact of the matter is, is that there is no specific GPA you need to get into dental school because that range is so variable. You know, there are people with 4.0s that get in, there are people with high 2.0s and low 3.0s that get in. So there's a lot of factors that go into your application when it comes to applying to dental school. So I personally can never give someone a number when it comes to a GPA that you possibly need to get to dental school. But if I were to put in my input and give you guys advice, in all honesty, get the highest GPA possible. For people that have high GPAs and that are involved in other extracurricular activities, like you have a very good shot. So for my advice, and obviously, it's very hard to attain. I've gone through undergrad, I know the struggles, and whether you're someone that's in undergrad right now or going into college and interested into going into dentistry, like in all honesty, do your best to do as well as possible, and honestly, shoot for that 4.0. You know, when you start that classes, make sure you look at your syllabus, you know, you make a schedule for yourself, and you do whatever you can to get the highest grade possible, and if you do get to a point where you're struggling in the class, make sure you utilize the resources that the class and the university gives you. And you know, if it comes to it, meet with your professor. You know, open up and tell them you're struggling. You know, I've been in positions where I was struggling in my undergrad courses, and I have talked to my professors. And honestly, they gave me the best advice possible, and I did so much better because of that. So don't be afraid to utilize those resources that they give you. You know, reach out to your professors because. At the end of the day, they took this job because they're passionate about teaching and they're there to help you. Well, at least I hope. But, <laughs> you know, do whatever you can at the end of the day to do as well as you can in the class. And you should have that feeling like, hey, I took this class and regardless of what I got, like I tried my best. You know, you want to aim for the highest grade possible, but at the end of the day, you want to say, you want to look back and say like, hey, like I'm satisfied with this grade or this score because of the fact that I tried my best and utilized every resource possible and did whatever I could as a student to do well. So that's all you need to look for. But in terms of just your grades, like I'm telling you, it's very important to have a high GPA because dental school, it's tough. You know, it's a lot of didactic work. You have exams every single week, at least with my curriculum. And it's just a constant cycle of just studying, taking an exam, doing lab work, going into sim lab. It's just a lot of stuff on your plate. So, you know, a high GPA to an admissions committee is a good representation that, hey, you can handle these courses. But again, if you don't have it, do not stress because, you know, there's no specific GPA you need. Just try to go for the highest possible GPA that you can because in all honesty, it's gonna make you a more competitive applicant. But at the same time, there are prestigious programs that take people with lower GPAs. There are so many factors that come into accepting dental students that it's not just about GPA and I can't give you like a specific number as to what you need, but if I were to give you advice on that specific component, just get the highest you possibly can get. So hopefully that advice helps you guys. Honestly guys, just do your best. And when you guys finish the course, like if you look back and say, hey, I did the best that I possibly could, like that's honestly all you need, you know? Not everyone can get a four point in a class and it honestly depends on your circumstance. So I completely understand like if, it, if you don't get the highest grade possible, but if you look back and say, hey, I did the best that I possibly could, that's all that matters. Secondly, I'm gonna talk about the DAT and how it pertains to you being a successful applicant. Now, in all honesty, it's the same thing as GPA. The higher score you get, the better it is for you. Because at the end of the day, 
the DAT is an exam that every single applicant will take. You know, you can go to this university and get this GPA, and you go to this other university and get another GPA, so it doesn't really equal out. But the DAT is the exam that everyone has to take in order to get accepted into dental school. So, the higher you get, the better chances of you of getting into dental school is. And for me, like, I was not a very good standardized test taker, but when I took the DAT, I genuinely thought it was very fair, and I promise you, if you work hard for it, you will get a competitive score. And again, there's no specific score that I would say like, hey, you need this score to get accepted in dental school, because if I'm being completely honest, like, there are people with 18s that are in dental school, and, you know, and at the same time, there are people with like 27, 28s that are in dental school, you know? Like, the number varies a lot, and again, there's so many other components that comes into accepting students in a dental school, so um, if I were to give advice on just the DAT component, just please do your best. And in terms of just taking the exam and setting yourself up for success when it comes to that exam, you know, if you're someone that hasn't taken yet, if I were to give you advice, so do whatever you can to make sure that all your focus is put into that exam. And what I mean by that is, try not to work when you're taking the exam, try not to take any courses, you know, do your best to have your focus solely on that exam so you have time to relax and do the stuff that you enjoy because having gone through it, I'm almost done with my D1 year. Like, to this day, the DAT is the hardest thing I've ever gone through. Obviously, that might change as my curriculum gets tougher and I take my boards, but there's no question that the DAT is the hardest thing that I've ever had to go through. Like, if it's in your control because I know, like, you know, everyone's circumstance is different. I don't recommend working. I don't re recommend taking classes. I don't recommend doing stuff that takes your focus off the exam if you don't have to do it because there comes a point, and obviously it's different for everyone, but, you know, you might spend eight to 12 hours a day, you know, for, you, you don't even know how many weeks studying for this exam, and that's just the reality of it. And, and I'm not saying that to scare you because, you know, you take these four to five hour practice tests and then you review it, take breaks, review it again, and then the time just adds up. So you wanna have like your days dedicated to that exam and have time on the side in order to make sure that like you do stuff you enjoy, you have time to relax so you can stay sane. So when it comes to that exam, get the highest score you possibly can and when you schedule that exam and when you're studying for it, please make sure that you have time, that you have a two to three month period of time where you can solely focus that on, on that exam. Obviously, like I said before, every circumstance is different and not everyone can do that. Like I was fortunate enough to be in a position where I was free that whole summer. I only had one class, but that one class did not require that much work. But essentially like 95% of my focus was onto that exam and I didn't have any other priorities and I had and I still had time to work out, you know, hang out with my friends, like when I wasn't studying. So when it comes to it, put all your effort into that exam and try not to have any other things going on because it'll only help you. I cannot tell you how many people take this with like a full course load or like 30 to 40 hours of work. And you know, I'm not gonna lie, there are some people that can handle it and they do very well, but others people, it's their downfall, you know? Like they, they literally say like, hey, I didn't even have enough time to study. My exam is next week, what do I do? So I'm trying to tell you this before you schedule the exam, do your best to please, I'm telling you, make enough time for it as possible. Because I'm telling you, it puts you in a much better position to do well. And I'm not saying you can't do well, like I said before, like, so many people, you know, have work, you know, take a full course load and still do well. But those people, without a doubt, are definitely more stressed because their time is limited and this is an exam where you need a lot of time to study. So that's just my advice. Um, I hope you guys take it <laughs> with that exam because without a doubt, at least in my opinion and a lot of people's opinion, the DAT is the hardest part of the whole process. So, you know, just do your best, try to get the highest score that you can possibly attain and yeah, make the most time for it as you can. Again, in terms of just score, I, I honestly can give you guys like a, like a range. Like I know people in my class that had 18s, 19s, and they had no problem being accepted. And obviously there are people on the high end of the spectrum that had like 24s, 25s. Like I would recommend, I would say anything in the 20s is considered a competitive score, but there are people that get in with the 18s and 19s, no question. But yeah, that's my advice on the DIT aspect as it pertains to you as a competitive applicant. And lastly, I'm gonna talk about major. 
If this is a very popular question that people ask me, they'll be like, Simran, hey, like, what major do I need to be a competitive applicant? Simran, like, am I doing the right major, this and that? And when it comes to your major, and this is my genuine opinion, and something that I've heard from so many people on admissions committee, it does not matter. <laughs> like, it genuinely does not matter what major you are. As long as you take the prerequisite courses that are required for dental school, it does not matter what major you are. You could be philosophy, you can be business, you know, you can be engineering, do whatever you want. But make sure you take the prerequisite courses that are required for dental school. And there are some dental schools that might require like other science classes outside of like the basic prerequisite courses. So make sure you pay attention to that. And before you apply, you go to their website just to make sure you have those courses uh, by the time you graduate. But yeah, when it comes to major, like people in my class, you know, I've met English majors, I've met engineering majors, philosophy majors, business majors, and then obviously a lot of traditional sciences majors, it doesn't matter. Um, and obviously there's some schools that might think it's unique, like hey, like, uh, this person isn't a science major, but he did well in his science classes, and he's also doing well in his major classes. So it might give you an advantage. You know, it's honestly very subjective. Um, I wouldn't say like being a non-science major would help you because that opinion depends on the school you're applying to. And obviously, I don't have an answer for that because that information isn't available. But if I were to give my opinion on the whole major topic, like undergrad is a time for you to learn and do the things that you enjoy. You know, you have a lot of time, you're taking what, three to four to maybe five classes, six, you know, if you're out of the game, but like, you know, undergrad is time for you to learn and do the things that you enjoy. So definitely take advantage of that. You know, like if, you want, if you're very into philosophy, but you want to go to dental school, take those philosophy courses alongside those science courses. Like you definitely utilize that time to do things that you enjoy because at the end of the day, like undergrad is a time that you'll never get back. Like if I were to do undergrad again, I, I probably wish that I would have obtained a major that was more passionate in. I majored in human biology and psychology just because like I was on a pre-dental track and, I, and it just lined a lot of my science courses. But if I were to do it again, maybe I would have done something like media and information or like something technology related that'll help me learn about like videography, editing, because I genuinely enjoy that stuff and want to learn about that stuff. Like I'm not very good at it, but I'm sure like being a major in that would have helped me in that aspect. That's an example for me, but you know, whatever major you want to do, honestly, just do it. Just make sure you're talking to an advisor and they're making sure that you're on the right track to not only get your major requirements, but your pre-dental requirements. And you're talking to peers and students and getting advice on, hey, like, like what professor should I take this class with? And how's this professor when it comes to this course? If I hadn't taken a class with like a specific professor, I don't know if I would have gotten the grade that I got because, you know, I would always do my research before I signed up for class, like, hey, like what are students' opinions about this particular professor? What is the professor's teaching style? Like I would try to ask people. Every university has websites that like rate professors and whatnot. I wouldn't look too into that, but more so I would talk to like upperclassmen, people you trust, and get their opinions on that. Because at the end of the day, like, you know, a class may have a specific course code, but if this professor teaches that class and that professor teaches that class, like it's probably not gonna be the exact same thing because they might have different teaching styles, they might have different opinions. Like one professor might want a certain amount of people to succeed and the other professor might want more. So you really gotta look into that. But yeah, um, as it pertains to your major, like in all honesty, it genuinely does not matter. Um, but if I were to give any advice, like don't try to do a harder major in order to get into dental school, because like your GPA could take a hit from it. And I would not do like a harder major like, you know, engineering or like, you know, biochemistry or whatever, just to make yourself look like a better applicant and have your GPA take a hit. Because I think it's more important to have a higher GPA when you apply opposed to your major. But in terms of just like what major you wanna pursue, do whatever you're interested in and make sure you're able to handle that major, you know, and be as successful as you can. So hopefully this video was helpful guys. Um, this is part one of the guide to get into dental school series and I'll be posting more videos about this shortly. So again, if this type of content interests you, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. I'll be making more videos in the future. Thank you guys so much for watching and have a great day.